thanks to top coder uh, for giving me an opportunity to deliver this talk uh, to a wonderful community and um, so so today i'll be uh, talking about uh, uh, building your first serverless uh, you know python function um, and how to host it in the cloud okay and uh, before I deep dive, um, I just want to introduce myself to the community. Um, I'm Vivek. Um, I did you know, software development. I did for around eight to nine years in IBM. And uh, and then I was a DevOps you know, enthusiastic and uh, very enthusiastic about DevOps and uh, wanted to uh, build my career in terms of DevOps and then moved to HCL as a solution architect, then did some you know, uh, you know, head of uh, uh, DevOps for one of the startup, and then I was a founder, and then I worked with DigitalOcean uh, for a couple of uh, years, and then uh, I moved into Microsoft as a senior product marketing manager for a developer ecosystem. So it's basically been uh, with developers and 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 now interacting with developers and uh, learning from developers. Uh, that's me. Uh, you know, before I deep dive into serverless, um, I just want to give a bit of history. Um, so when you know uh, when it all started, right? When when we all you know were hosting applications uh, ten years back or fifteen years back, uh, in, you know when I started my career. Um, so we were hosting it on on premises. Uh, it's mostly focused on. Uh, servers and storage and managing the servers and storages. Uh, we will talk about the problems, uh, you know, which which you, you know, uh, which is faced when 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 in, when on on premises. Uh, but it was more from server and storage. And when when the uh, digitalization happened, when the servers and storage accessibility were made easy via the cloud providers, uh, the infrastructure as a service came into picture. It's just that. It's just moving servers and storage uh, with security. Uh, so that's exactly what happened uh, you know, a few years later. And then, uh, you know, but you still used to manage the OS and the softwares and the developer tools you were using. Uh, so PaaS gave you uh, that flexibility uh, where the OS manageability and dev tools and everything managed through the PaaS layer. Uh, but the serverless uh, is one interesting uh, concept uh, from the compute perspective, you are only managing the apps and services. You are only building an app and you're, you know, uh, providing your app to the cloud service provider, and rest is taken care of by the, uh, you know, service provider. So we'll go deep dive. I mean, this this was just a introduction to it. So as I told you, uh, before cloud happened, um, there were so many problems and challenges we were facing. Uh, you know, what about the network connections? Uh, who is going to monitor my app and how do we patch it and uh, physical access to these servers, uh, you know, the right size to pick up uh, some of these servers. So there were so many problems and challenges uh, in our on-premises uh, environment and uh, through, uh, dig you know, through uh, the digitalization of the uh, businesses and accessibility to cloud, uh, you know, changed some of these uh, aspects that is, uh, you know, you are only worried about uh, how do I patch, how do I take backups, who's going to monitor, how do I set up the right size. This is through infrastructure as a service. Rest is taken care, right? The physical access, you don't really have to bother about. Procuring the servers, you don't really have to bother about the ones which you were bothering when it was a non-premises. Um, so the past came into picture uh, where true digital transformation started. Uh, that is, it solved the problem of uh, you packaging it, you patching it, and the uh, managing the OS, uh, OS patching, and uh, managing the security of your OS. You you are not really bothered uh, in the pass uh, layer, and you are only worried about uh, how do I pick up the right size and um, how do I uh, you know scale my app and various other things which is required for you to manage your application. So. Uh, but when you know the next gen apps is coming in serverless and uh, it's the only question you have to answer here is uh, you know how do i architect my app right 
you know it's it's basically um, you know building an event driven architecture and uh, deploying a simple piece of code and uh, you know get that simple piece of code running only when it is required and you don't really have to keep running your code all the time and for that you know and then and again you know you really don't have to bother about the infrastructure as a devops engineer i i was really bothered about uh, you know managing the infrastructure when you know people were scaling their applications and there were a lot of transaction happening uh, on my application so i was really worried about the production how it's going to work it's going to fail how do i scale it how do i auto scale it so everything is handled by serverless architecture as a developer i'll just run a piece of code and then uh, you know it's just write a piece of code and then just deploy this piece of code uh, on the uh, service provider cloud service provider like the azure and then just you know uh, deploy that and invoke it uh, whenever it is required uh, through our triggers so we will see this we will see the complete demo we will build one locally and we will deploy it uh, to the cloud as well um so what is serverless so it's basically uh, you're abstracting the server so you're only focusing on writing the code and after that you're just uh, you know deploying that code uh, on a on a functions or on a on a programming model which we provide and then uh, that is the infrastructure manageability uh, the scalability the availability reliability everything is managed by the cloud service provider and uh, it's basically from uh, event driven architecture perspective so when you do when you design a serverless it's it's basically uh, you know it should be in a event driven uh, architecture uh, the reason is uh, you know you are actually managing uh, these uh, functions in a you know in a trigger manner and then you are connecting all these functions to uh, solve a particular problem and we will see the use cases at the end of my talk i want to showcase some somewhere around 8 to 10 uh, uh, use cases and we will see each use cases where serverless is used as of today and in different industries uh, how it is used uh, so from the computer resource perspective as well you know you you don't really have to use the compute resources uh, you know all the time like for example uh, to do a transaction through beam beam api or the or the paytm or the payment uh, you know uh, payment payment apis right uh, when you do that there is a otp for you know otp sent uh, with the pin right so you really don't have to write up you know have an infrastructure to send that otp pin you know it's, it can be triggered and the trigger can call those uh, apis and they, you can get those otps uh, onto your mobile so through an sms right so um and again it's pay per use uh, so you are using how much function calls you are making uh, it's basically an api call and how much uh, time it is taking to execute and memory used uh, that's where the billing goes so it's it's pretty much you're using and you're paying and uh, you're not holding an infrastructure uh, just to hold for it and there is no transaction at all i mean it, to be very honest right from an india specific right there is no uh, you know no transaction happening from you know morning 3 am to 6 am and you really don't have to hold an infrastructure from 3 am to 6 am or from 7 am right so uh, you know uh, so what are the benefits of uh, going serverless is obviously focus so basically you are uh, as a developer as a company as a startup uh, you know you're focusing on the business problem you're the technology they are not really worried about scaling your application you're not worried about reliability of your application not worried about uh, the maintainability of it so you're just writing your code you're managing your code you're architecting it right and then just deploying it and then the code is taken care uh, at the end you know at the end by the uh, service provider and scaling of it and reliability everything is security wise everything is taken care of by the uh, service provider and the efficiency part and obviously it is pretty efficient because it the serverless uh, programming models uh, provide you the local development and uh, and also integrations with uh, githubs and various other tool sets and also you know easily manage you know deployable triggers and other 
the things. So it's basically a programming model it gives you where you can efficiently code your application and there is flexibility. And what I mean by flexibility, it's, it's kind of a particular problem. So in a, in a, in a, in a real world scenario, there is a, um, you know, two, three, two, three problems you're trying to solve in a particular application and, and a particular problem can be solved through Go programming language and a particular problem can be solved in a Python programming language. And there is another specific problem which you can solve it in a Java. You can design your application in three different programming languages and connect it uh, together. And then, uh, you know, your application can make use of the uh, powerful languages, uh, different languages, and, and also stay, uh, and, and, and your application is also uh, scalable and uh, reliable and et cetera. So, so it's, it gives you a flexibility. So that's, that's the, uh, you know, kind of way you can architect it. And obviously it's a very good choice uh, for building your microservice architecture. So um, as of now, I, I just spoke about, um, you know, the serverless as a compute, right? Serverless mm -hmm. as a concept and compute and how to, how to deliver it. But functions as a service is a programming model. It's basically, uh, you, know, you know, the, it's basically a framework, in fact. So uh, it has a single purpose, you know, the all functions has to be designed in a single purpose uh, solution. Any, any program language, you know, we used to, we used to do object oriented program and we, we even do object oriented programming as of today too. Uh, in that, you, you know, there is something with functions and what does a function do? It's just basically run a simple piece of code and solves a particular problem and it will only get invoked on the when you call it. So that's, that's the, you know, simple example of, a, you know, that same terminology is being, you know, taken out of uh, the uh, object oriented programming and uh, connected to the serverless. It's a single purpose, it does one specific job and it is a small short lived uh, execution and it is stateless. That means it does not hold any kind of data or anything, data is stored in the storages but is this just a trigger and calls and some business logic, it runs or some business logic on the data. And then uh, it's, it's specifically from the event-driven architecture and uh, it can scale. So it's, it's basically you can replicate and scale these uh, you know, functions. So uh, today I'm gonna to talk about the Azure functions, uh, which is nothing but a serverless uh, programming model. So there are, you know, things which it's provide, that is the programming model, that is it has a built-in triggers and bindings. We will see what are those uh, in the demo. And, uh, you know, bindings are nothing but the third party executions. And then there is, uh, you know, you can build code locally, you can test it locally, debug it locally. The what I mean is you can develop the code on your laptop, uh, use the developer tools like Visual Studios, Azure CLI, and, uh, Azure function core tools, and then use the, um, you know, editor or the you know, web-based interfaces to deploy your applications to, uh, to the cloud. And there is obviously hosting options, the flexibility, the way you want to host it. Um, you know, it's a controlled environment. Uh, you really don't want to do a, you know, a execution of your uh, functions, uh, you know, API you put it, you know, people bombard that API, you know, you'd want to have a, a controlled execution, you want to have a flexibility of execution, you want to control the number of replica applications these functions can call. So um, given that, uh, what do you focus on? So you're basically you're focusing on code and you're not plumbing, that means you're not managing infrastructure and uh, auto scaling is already inbuilt to these uh, you know, function programming model, the Azure function, which I talked about, and you're not wasting the resources and you're only paying for the what you're using it. So a couple of um, you know, uh, efficiencies you can build is, uh, how do you develop it? Uh, so you build a triggers. Uh, triggers are nothing but, uh, you know, how do you trigger it? How do you trigger a function? It could be a HTTP trigger, it could be a database update trigger, it could be a blob storage. Uh, which is an object oriented storage trigger. It could be queuing triggers. It could be event hub triggers. So there are various uh, triggers, uh, time triggers as well. So there are various triggers uh, options uh, provided by the uh, Azure functions. And there are proxies where you can 
uh, define APIs and connect to endpoints and use those APIs. And there are CSED integrations built into it. And there is binding, binding to the data uh, of Azure solutions or output to Azure solutions. That means Azure services. So bind to different Azure services, which we provide. Um, and then there is a third party service uh, where you can also bind it to different third party uh, tool sets as well. And you can obviously debug locally using VS coders and other things. And there is monitoring um, capability as well for your uh, function. So this is how it is built. Uh, you do a trigger or trigger through uh, HTTP triggers. And then there is a, you know, a function which is running. It, there is an input binding where you can call the data. And then there is an output binding where it can be an Azure, uh, Azure a service or it could be an external service as well. So this is this is how um, you know you can expect a function to work. And uh, there are obviously multiple language support, hosting options, and there is something called as durable functions, which is a stateful function. That means uh, you can have five different set of functions running uh, parallel. That means one function calling the other function and the other function calling the other function. And then there is a uh, responses and there is a weight and etc. So there is uh, that's how we can build a durable function. It's a little bit complex. Um, so I, I can give you links uh, where you can figure out how to do those functions. Um, uh, before I go into the scenarios or the use cases, so let me uh, give you a demo of how to really build those functions. Um, let me. Oops. Yes, good. Okay, this is my VS code. Let me. Okay, so um, I am just, I've installed a couple of things uh, on the VS code plugins. So uh, it's basically you need a function plugin and uh, you need, I mean, you can see various plugins you can do. First of all, you need an Azure uh, extension. And once you have this Azure extension, you have a couple of plugins already installed, but there are other couple of tools which I have installed. Um, that is the, um, you know, function core tools. Uh, if you see my screen, you're able to see my screen. Yep. Uh, the function. Um, version okay so this is function core tools so if i click on this this is a cli for function to run a couple of things on the function side so let me go back to the uh, visual studio i have installed uh, the required set of tools i have installed python extension i have installed uh, the azure extension i have installed the function azure function extensions and then um, the CLI part of it, the Azure Core tools. Uh, so let me create a new function. If you see this button, you know, uh, if you click on that button, you'll get, uh, you know, you can create it through a function project. So you can create wherever you want. So I've just used serverless. And then there is whichever language you want to build that, uh, you know, serverless uh, you know, function. So basically, whichever uh, language you pick, right? You usually have its own templates. So uh, I'll just show you how exactly it works. Uh, so this, let me select the Python, and then there is an interpreter 3.7. Um, and then there is a couple of triggers I talked about. So there is one HTTP trigger, but there are a couple of other triggers. That is block storage is an object storage trigger. That means, uh, say you upload uh, a pic from Instagram, you take a pic, uh, so know, uh, um, you take a selfie and you upload it to Instagram and it, it, it gets uploaded to a object storage and then it triggers something uh, to do in the backend. That means it, it, to update a database on the upload and, and, and various or update its friends uh, about this upload and etc. Or if you have tagged someone or something like that. So this is this is how you can use the functions. And this is this Cosmos DB, which is nothing but our um, you know MongoDB uh, you know service and just no SQL service. And then there is event triggers, event hubs, queue, queuing storage, queue, various 
triggers you have time trigger everything so let me choose the heredity trigger the most used one and then we will say order 001 that's the name of the function right and a uh, couple of things authorization level that means anonymous anybody can run this function a function can fun run a function an admin can run a function so basically it's it's a controlled way of execution so as of now i created a function if you see this it's not it's creating an environment for me uh, as of now i created a function on the local project and it is here it's it's in the local that means it's on my laptop it's not on the cloud yet it's on my laptop so what i'm going to do now is you know uh, try and execute this function locally as of now it is not running um, it's let me copy this function so let me copy this link and go and execute as of now it's not running right so as of now it's it's basically saying it's not reachable so what i should be doing i'll go here and if you see i'm in that serverless folder and you see that you know there's a couple of uh, files has been created this particular structure is created because i have you know chosen python language if I have chosen Java, there will be something else that is source, jar, and other things, right? So, uh, so this is basically uh, because I have uh, not, uh, you know, chosen the Python. Um, so basically, it creates a programming environment for me. To, this is what I was talking about. It's the flexibility and the, uh, you know, uh, the focus it gives you. You know, you just have to say I want to do something in Python, and everything is ready. Um, all I need to do is now just write uh, code and then run. But as of now, just to get started, uh, I'll just say function start, and it gets you know, the through CLI. Uh, I'm able to start the function. So it's if you see this uh, link, this is local. So this is basically uh, has been started uh, locally, right? So let me go back to the link which I had. So basically, it's now up and name is equal to Vivek. So, hello, Vivek. Or you can even say, because top order, orders, right? I mean, that's better. <laughs> okay, so, um, so this is locally as of now, right? So this is, this function is running local and we need to run this in, in Azure service, right? So when I say Azure service, this is the cloud, this is the portal where if I log into the portal, you can see this as a portal. As of now, there is nothing being created. There's no resources, there's no resource group, all resources, nothing is there. It's not running on cloud. So all we need to do is, do is push this particular piece of code which we have written to the cloud. So this is to create, this is, to create function this is to create a folder structure and this is to deploy the function this particular button i just click on the button and say deploy um, create a new function and you can see, if you see this, this is the website it is going to be created. So you have to just give them a name. And then you choose the Python interpretation. And this is the most important thing where you want to host this particular function. It can be uh, any of these, uh, you know, uh, regions. Uh, you can see some of the places uh, near to our uh, location, which is India if it is there part available in west india okay uh, let me select central us so it is being pushed to cloud as of now so it is being created under the cloud so you can see this uh, update here the code is getting pushed to the cloud so when i say it's getting pushed you'll see 
what's happening here is there anything changes happening not yet still getting back so take some time so if you see it's been created under visual studio so you by default you will not be able to see this unless and until you log into azure you see this part this is where the login has happened so just because i have logged in i can see this visual studio enterprise here and this is where the upload is happening to the cloud so you can see that it's been created so i'm just waiting for it to complete once it completes you can we can see that it's get uploaded so it's still deploying you can see that a couple of things it has been created application settings files logs deployment deployment is also about how do you want to deploy it so you can have this piece of code in github repository and then just connect it here so whenever you push the code in github it gets deployed to the cloud so directly so there is so these are the you know flexibility the efficiencies for a developer where you know it's pretty easy for a developer just to come back here and just write a code right wait for okay so if you see this now there are a couple of things got created one is obviously the function and then there is application insight application insight is the monitoring of the services so you can figure that out and there is a storage account has been created for managing the function okay so if i open this function there is it has a couple of things uh, this is the function which got deployed and this is the one which we deployed there right so if i copy this link and open it here it will say that your function is deployed right so your function is ready up and running all fine so there are a couple of things uh, if you see there are you know functions and app keys and these are for security and there is a configuration settings and these are ssl and networking settings as well where you can create a vnet and try to connect through vnets so there are bunch of things you can do api management and calls and various other things so uh, you can i'll give you all the links i'll give you cookbook uh, free cookbook where you can go and you know learn end to end serverless uh, from basics to uh, to the export level okay so uh, this is what we have deployed on the cloud and uh, let me go back and we will call this uh, api you know i'm just copying this um, and we will deploy it here so here you see hello top code right so uh, you know you can uh, see that we have deployed this particular code uh, from the local system to the cloud and all we need to do now is you know change our code right so we just need to go and change our code right we just go back to azure okay i don't have a code here open the serverless uh, the code is here so this is where logs as well you can see if i click on the stream logs and view outputs i can even see the logs uh, the, the things which were happening like if i see stream logs it will, it will show the logs for me right so okay this is uh, it will open up so debug console terminal so uh, I have opened the code 
Uh, let me show you this. So all we have to do is hello. Hello, top coder from. Okay, so I've just changed the code and I have, uh, you know, done the, you know, I've saved the code. I didn't do anything. The code, once I save it, the automatically the function which is there, uh, which is running, gets, you know, updated. So it's basically it's already updated. So all I have to go here and refresh. A lot of coder from top coder, right? So now we can say, okay, we can change this to Rick. This is so. This is how uh, local development works, right? So I we just go and update a code, piece of code, and once I update the piece of code, um, you can see that you know I can. It is directly deployed on local development, so it's very easy to test, very easy to debug locally because a lot of uh, extensions. Uh, provided by the Visual Studio for Python and for various other things, and also some of these logs and other things, it's, it's already available here. Okay, now uh, you can even go back and say, Hey, uh, why don't you deploy this uh, to the top code which we wrote? Right, so it gets redeployed, you know, um, redeploy. Yes, you can go and redeploy the code which we made the changes. And this gets deployed directly to the cloud function, which we have written, right? The link uh, cloud function will be updated. So once it gets updated, we just need to mention this as Vivek. We change this to Vivek and we we'll wait for this function to work, right? Oh, it took the top coder, sorry. So it's got updated, so it's pretty easy, right? So once it has been updated, it's pretty easy to update, right? It's still deploying though here, but it has actually deployed it uh, for me already. Okay, so this is how you can build uh, the function. So you just need to set up your local environment through Visual Studio, uh, deploy, I mean, build locally. Uh, you need some of the tool sets like the Azure function core tools, uh, Python extensions and the Visual Studio Azure extension and the function extension. Once it has been done, um, you just uh, need to build your application locally and then write your code the way you want to write the fun particular function code. And then um, you're just deploying to the cloud uh, if you want to use cloud. Uh, but if you know you want to just test it out, you can still use the you know, local development, but uh, building it in cloud and make accessible, the API is accessible on cloud and for building an application, you definitely need cloud. And we talked about it in first few slides, right? So um, this is how you can do it. And uh, let me go back. Um, I just want to show a couple of things uh, before, oops, I started from first, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Let me go to the uh, you know sample scenarios for functions. So very important. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some of these architectures um, where uh, in, and also some some are very specific to some of the industries which is required. Um, one is obviously uh, you know uh, you know retail scenario, right? We have been using this scenario. We go online pick up some order and come back, right? So this is how it works when you in a in a serverless world. You just go and make a request through HTTP trigger and then uh, you know, request is queued in the you know, uh, in the service bus. Sorry, this is a service bus trigger. Uh, if you see, there is a request going into this uh, you know, service bus, which means it is queuing system. And through queuing system, you're calling a function and then you are sending the output to a Cosmos DB, which is NoSQL uh, database. So uh, basically this is a web uh, design, a simple web uh, design, and you're actually uh, using a function to manage uh, the request, online order, uh, you know, particular picking up from, uh, from queue and updating the database. Right. And then there is an uh, example of you going out with colleagues and you paid for the uh, you know, the lunch, um, you know, in, in, 
where whichever party it was, and then you requested the payment from your colleagues, right? Then there's, that's the HTTP, uh, you know, HTTP API call from your mobile. Uh, you just just send it uh, through a function. Uh, so all these all these are functions. These two are functions, and then uh, through this you update the database, and uh, and the database again Cosmos DB trigger. You are using Cosmos DB trigger here. This is a HTTP trigger. This is a Cosmos DB trigger to call a function. And then there is a, a function to not send notifications to your friends. So this is how you can use uh, you know, mobile uh, you know, based applications uh, through a serverless architecture. And then you're using it in manufacturing industry through an IoT. So you, there are IoT hubs. Uh, so you are sending to you know the IoT devices send data to IoT Hub, and through that there is a trigger which is happening, and then you call a function uh, through uh, IoT Hub or the service hub, event hubs, and then there is we have something called as uh, Azure App Logic, um, Logic Service, uh, Logic Flow, and you, you can actually connect uh, different uh, third-party you know uh, third-party tool sets with the Azure services. So through that logic, you are invoking Zendesk and a repair request is going through Zendesk. So this is a complete workflow you can use in IoT industries, like in manufacturing industry through IoTs, right? And then there is conversational bots, uh, which you can build you know, uh, through a, a smartphone, asking for a vacation option and various other things. Uh, but uh, you know, if you see this, right? There's a function after function calls, and then there's a request coming back. And then there is a real time uh, file processing function. Uh, again, use of storage, something called as blob storage. I gave you this example uh, previously with the Instagram and the, the selfies upload, right? You upload it into a blob storage, which is an object storage, and then there is a trigger, and then there is a lot of activities which happens uh, through the triggers, right? And then there is a you know, real time streaming processes, which you can perform, you know, in, um, uh, you know, various uh, industries, right? So uh, there are a lot of data which is being captured. And then this data is through event hubs. Uh, you can actually manage this data and build a visualization uh, through a lot of, uh, you know, functions which you are running through Python, right? So there are finance and surveys and then SaaS applications. So there is, vast variety of applications you can build through functions. It's basically a simple piece of code um, running as an event trigger. And you know, Azure function is a programming model, is a framework which is being provided to you for you to run these uh, functions. So a couple of links uh, which I would love to uh, give you, you know, the, the uh, fun book, uh, you, can, you can take these links. Uh, it has a couple of, um, uh, you know the cookbook, and uh, it has uh, how to build an intelligent cloud through uh, um, through the uh, through the serverless, and and obviously the architecture uh, how to build a uh, you know a complete uh, durable functions through uh, architecture. It's it's available in these three links. Okay, and uh, join us. Uh, by the way, we I keep writing a lot of uh, blogs, or uh, you know even. Uh, if you're writing blogs, please send it to me. So we uh, curate a lot of blogs and we send it across to everyone. So you just uh, need to sign up and you get uh, a complete developer update with sample piece of code and other things and such kind of sessions available to you.